Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> All right. So, um, hello, everybody. We're just working out some technical difficulties on our end, but uh, I think we're okay now. So, thank you for joining us. Today's broadcast is being sponsored by the website www.scholarshipmembershipsite.com. And we are talking with Robin, and we are following up on three points. Uh, the first two of particular from last week in regards to the letter of recommendations and also what happened if you've had time to work on your personal statement and then if you had time to go ahead and create an account on FastWeb for a free scholarship search engine. Okay, um, so to start uh, I was able to get one letter of recommendation. Um, I met with a former supervisor from my last job and we met for coffee and had like a two-hour hangout which was really nice and then uh, she, I asked her for the letter of recommendation which I think I brought up last time and uh, what I did for her since I have two different schools that I'm looking at I sent her a follow-up email first of all thanking her for meeting with me and telling her just how much I enjoyed our conversation um, and then uh, gave her some resources outside of this process that we had talked about and then I also um, gave her directions for each of the schools and how they wanted the letter of recommendation because uh, which I'll go into in a minute but both of them have different ways to get the letters to them um, and then yeah then she wrote me back a few days later and sent a draft of the letter of recommendation and asked for any editing or if it sounds good or if I have any suggestions um, so I'm just sitting with actually reading the letter and processing how nice it is <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> that's where I'm at nice okay so if I understand correctly do does each school want two letters of recommendation so no, I um, I reread the requirements. Um, be, so Smith School Social Work wants four recommendations, um, okay. and how they want it is they have a form on the website, and you put in the name of the person and their email, and then they're going to send an email to that individual with the directions however the directions are also on the website so that's what I cut and pasted and put into an email to this person um, CIS wants two letter recommendations uh, and they have their own uh, website where the person that's writing the recommendation uploads it onto the website so I have that information in an email. I, I could try to do a screen share so you, you can see it, or does that? Yeah, that answers the question. Um, I was primarily asking the question not only for you to get clarity on your situation, but also because I want viewers to understand that you're looking at two different colleges, and different colleges have different requirements. So it's very interesting that one school requires twice the amount of recommendations that the other school does. And also, another reason why I think it's important for families to get involved uh, online, especially with these kind of hangouts and watching the interaction, is because technology has changed. And if these colleges are requiring things to be done online, it is oftentimes harder for the previous generation to give advice to the next generation saying, this is how I did it, because technology has changed the process. And so what happens is we usually have a general idea about where to go, but when you network and you start communicating and following other people and you see what they're doing, you're a great example of how technology has changed and what you're doing and why it's so important to read the details. So I think that's, that's an awesome job that you know, you're reading this information and you're able to answer. Yeah, I, I think one thing that I've noticed that I do in the past, and it is to, I get so excited, I've talked about this, and I like, 
get so enthusiastic and I miss the details, so it's very important for me to go back and reread because I misunderstood, um, especially with Smith, that yeah, they want four people to recommend you. And so, um, and then yeah, just the fine details of how each school, it, yeah, it's not just putting them, printing them out, putting an envelope and sending it. It's uh, one of them is they're going to get their own email, and the other one is they need to go to this website and upload it themselves. So I guess the thing for me is to I, I pr tried to provide as much clarity and information to this person, and then I also put at the bottom of the letter, like, you know, if this, if any of this is confusing or unclear, please contact me back and, you know, yeah. I mean, I've, I've just been pretty open and honest with her about, um, not knowing these processes and I have a nice relationship with her that I can we can go back and forth I guess is what I'm trying to say <laughs> that's awesome and that also brings up another good point too especially for people who are wondering who to ask for a letter of recommendation because a lot of like teachers if like say teachers, employers um, people that you may want to ask a letter of recommendation from I know certainly when I was in college, I had everything handwritten in a letter or they typed it in front of it on a computer, sent it in an envelope, and at that time, they required that person to have a signature on the back of the envelope, and that's how they guaranteed the officialness because it was genuine. So with technology, it does change things, and you certainly do need to be able to understand it so that when you go and you ask someone for a letter of recommendation, you know, an old someone from a generation or two may have a certain expectation of, oh, let me handwrite it. And if you explain about the website, that certainly provides clarity as to how they can help you. But also, some people might have. Um, I know there. Are, I have certainly met people in my life who are of an older generation who don't like computers and may find that scary. And some people do avoid the computer at all costs. Other people are leery of it. Um, some people just want to know that if they have questions, they can contact you. And again, that depends upon the strength of the relationship. And if they truly do want to help you out, then they are going to be more willing to use the computer to help you out. So, Great. Um, so yeah, so I need to... Uh, the other person that I need to get a letter of recommendation from, I did not contact yet. Um, this process is, is pretty, it's a little scary for me. Um, and even in meeting with this person that did write the letter, I waited till the end and I kind of, there was this build up and then I asked and she was actually like, oh, I'd be so honored to write you a letter. And so I'm just trying to sit with that a little bit. Um, but I have some ideas of people. And actually, that brings up a good question about who, so we had talked about before, um, I'm not really in contact with my professors because I've been out of school for a while. Um, I have the two people I'm thinking of are past supervisors, but who is okay to write a letter of recommendation? Like, do, do you know, like, besides those two people, um, like, our coworkers, our former coworkers, our, like... Yes, that's a great question, and I would say yes, uh, both, especially to the former coworkers and the coworkers. And the reason being is people's idea of work has changed and what recommendations are okay. And as social proof, there's a website called LinkedIn.com that many people use. It's a social networking site that's used more kind of on, as an online resume format. And what's nice about the website is that when you connect with someone, the website requires you to put in information as to how you two connect. And if you put in there a coworker and you two worked at the same company, you can actually write them a letter of recommendation and they can write you a letter of recommendation and it's posted online. And because of how many people use the website and how popular it is, it's social proof that it is okay. And a lot of people, too, the attitudes have changed where before in previous generations it was definitely that it was very, very, you could tell that the supervisor was on top and the employees were on bottom. 
But with the way technology has changed the workplace and interaction with people, a lot of people acknowledge that you may actually spend more time with your coworker than you do with your supervisor. And from that standpoint, a coworker would be in a better position to more accurately represent you in terms of writing a letter of recommendation. Oh, that that's very helpful. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, and that opens up a few more options um, of people. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's so over the next week and hopefully the next few days, I will be following up on that. Um, and then the second thing you said... Uh, personal letter of uh, your personal statement. Yeah, that one, whew. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten started. I, um, I think... Yeah, I, I need to get started on that. I have been writing down here and there accomplishments and bullet points around things that I want to include in these um, two statements, which I guess it'll probably be mainly one that I'll um, adjust a bit. Um, but for, once again, the process of sitting down and for social work and uh, the Masters of Family Therapy, uh, Marriage and Family Therapy degree, uh, you have to go into a lot of your past and personal information and um, I think some of that is, is hard for me to sit with so uh, I'm, I'm avoiding it. Um, so if you have any helpful tips for that <laughs> or just getting started. <laughs> okay. Well, I do want to acknowledge you for putting out the bullet points as far as things that you've acknowledged and things that you do want to recommend. Um, just for clarity purposes, when I think of a statement, like a personal statement, to me that's usually me explaining to the college, you know, this is why I want to go to the college and me explaining, you know, why they should consider me as a student or why they want to pick me. Um, certainly because of your degree, and your area of field and your interest, it sounds like your personal statement has to dive in a lot deeper as far as personal reasons as to why you want to pursue that career. Um, am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, from that standpoint, um, I'm not sure what you do and don't feel comfortable saying on the air uh, through the internet so I will make my comments very general over the internet and then after the Google Hangout we can dive in a little bit deeper but I do know from what you've told me you've had several events that have happened in your past and I think that as a society we have been groomed to think of people on the right path or the wrong path and we often see very little variance uh, things are usually, as we say, white or black, uh, shades of gray. We tend to comment and put them in the black area. And I think that in life, a lot of situations happen. And because of your background, I think that makes you more able to help people because in some ways you can relate so you understand what they're going through. But at the same time, you can sit there and say, well, based upon everything I've been through, I know that people can make a choice and not go down that path or people can make the choice to get help and not do those things and you are an example but at the same time you know if you do have people that come to you there is a sense of connection that they want help because you've been there and you've done that and the example that I would use is you know for me people want to talk to me because I've been there I've done that but at the same time, I didn't fall into that trap of woe is me, I can't afford it. I figured out a way to get through it. And I think on an energy level, people can pick that up. But, you know, they're not always sure when they talk to you why. It's just like, it's like if you go to a counselor. Some counselors you feel like, yeah, I really connect with them. And other counselors you feel like you don't. And I think that intuitively you tend to connect with people who have been there. Because, you know, there have been scientific studies that say, that a lot of communication is nonverbal. So, 
but we'll dive in deeper as far as your background and what I know, and then I can give you more some, some more specific advice on that. Great. Yeah, that's very helpful. Um, okay, so there's personal statement. Um, and then I did create a fast web account. Um, I've clicked around a bit to get comfortable with it, um, but I feel like I still have a little bit more research to do and kind of uh, as opposed to just looking at them individually like I may be setting up like on the Google Calendar putting the due dates of them and maybe pasting like the descriptions on okay. one to kind of project out when they're due and not to feel so overwhelmed because a few of them that I've looked at are, are essays again and essays I get anxious around essays um, until I start actually writing and then it's really not that bad. It's just all that like, oh, essay, 500 words, whoa. Like, it's, once I start writing, it's fine, but um, trying to think of ways to make it a little bit, like break it down a bit. And I think, um, I mean, it has the nice feature about like, yes, I will apply or considering it or no, um, and it kind of manages it for you. So. Yeah. yeah. And the nice thing I like about it is if there's something that you don't want to apply to, you can click I'm not going to apply and it takes it off your list. Yes. Okay. And so uh, why don't you tell everybody how long did it take you to set up your account? Oh, uh, less than 10 minutes. Wow. That's so easy. Yep. Um, there are ads on there uh, for schools. Um, uh, if not ads, they also have like information where it's like if you want that school to send you stuff, you can choose yes or no. Um, a lot of them are, I, I've just skipped <laughs> to get to the information that I want. Um, so there is that, but it's a minor nuisance for all the other information that's on the website. So. And that's just part of the give and take process. I mean, someone's paying for the website to be maintained and, you know, all the services that go into that. And it's kind of like any website. Usually most websites have some sort of paid advertising or something to fund it and help support the content and the creative side of it. So it's just one of those things. At what point is it worth it? Uh, you're willing to look at a few ads and you're also willing to get some quality content after the ad which is the information that you're really interested in. So I don't think it's too much to spend five seconds closing an ad out in order to find a scholarship. I don't either. I, that was the only thing on there that I was like, oh, this is kind of annoying, but exactly. But the amount of information they have on the, their, uh, on the website, the way it's organized, um, yeah, it just got me really, it's very exciting. Um, and... It looks like a lot of people have gotten money from doing these scholarships. So, um, yes, so that was easy enough. Um, just for my own, like, accountability sake, I still need to fill out the FAFSA. Uh, I have not done that yet. And also, um, to get both of these, the process started with each school, um, Smith School of Social Work has a $60 application fee and CIIS has a $65 application fee that I've been holding off on paying. So those are two things that I would like to do in the next week. Okay. And then also I know that the FAFSA, when you fill it out, instead of filling it out for each school, you fill it out once and then it has a drop down box where I think you can choose up to six schools. So it's you fill it out once and then you put both schools on it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it saves you the work of having to do it twice. Um, also, I've heard that uh, because of the technology and integration that it used to be beforehand, you'd fill out the form and you had to go look at your tax information. Now they pull it up electronically. So I believe they do it with your social security number. So when you put your social security number into the FAFSA, 
uh, in the internet, then it automatically links it to the IRS and it can pull that information that's necessary. Yeah, actually, I remember you saying that now a few Hangouts ago, and that was something that was holding me up from doing it because I'm like, oh, where did I put my tax information? Oh my gosh. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna report back. Uh, I don't want to say like see if that's true because I believe what you're saying, <laughs> but um, hopefully that is true and uh, that would be really helpful. Yeah. And um, also, usually when you do the FAFSA, you can do it on your own, or usually a lot of times when you enroll in a college, they will do it with you. And since one of the colleges is closer, I'm not sure if that would be easier for you to be in their office and physically do it, because they usually do have an appointment process where they'll have someone walk you through it. And if you go that route, they'll usually have a list of things to bring with you. If you feel more comfortable talking to someone and doing it that way, uh, you can certainly do it at home and uh, go to look up FAFSA on the internet and it will also tell you what, what information you need. So it's kind of one of those things, do you feel more comfortable doing it in the comfort of your own home or are you one of those people where you feel comfortable talking to someone you want to go with them and it's like, here's my information, did I do it correctly or you know, can you input it into the computer for me? So. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, uh, it sounds like we've covered the three points that we wanted to cover today. So I do want to wrap uh, this Google Hangout up quickly. This way we can get off and then dive in deeper with a more personal conversation regarding your situation. So before we log off, is there anything you want to add or any other questions you have? Not at the moment. You've answered most of my questions, yes. <laughs> okay, awesome. So uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for watching and following along with us. And I want to remind you that this is being um, supported by the website, www.scholarshipmembership site. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all again next week.